Welcome back to video three of week two. As you're hopefully starting to realize by now, you are going to be getting yourself into a laying prone position, big toes together, ankles hanging out wide, crossing your arms, head on your hands, and maybe this time you can start twisting with your head the different direction to what you've done before. So this is just a little bit of a side note, but sometimes it can actually pay posturally to swap over which side you start with. So please bear that in mind. Once again, when we're halfway through, I'll remind you to swap your head over. I want you also to think about that same breathing that we did in the last video. So you're starting to channel that nasal diaphragmatic breathing where you're taking your breath much deeper into your body than you probably normally do. You're actively trying to create that movement of the lower rib cage in all directions, but you're also making sure that you exhale fully as well. Nice and calm, nice and slow, deeply, but that doesn't mean loudly. You're sipping that air. In today's kind of mindset-based video, I'm talking about the concept of mothering yourself. I would say that the most difficult thing about my job is not about deciding what's wrong with somebody's body or choosing the exercises that I have to give them. It's about teaching them to be kind to themselves. It's so hard. It's so, so hard. People are so used to forcing through things that cause them pain, determined to achieve things because they think that they should be able to do something or the person next to them can do something and they're thinking, oh, my hip is hurting while I do this thing. But if maybe if I try a bit harder, if I hold it for a bit longer, my hip will stop hurting. And that doesn't work. When we force through pain, all we do is create more pain for ourselves. It sounds so obvious, I think, when I say it like this, but actually in that moment when the person's doing their posture exercises or any form of exercise, it can really take you by surprise that you're kind of doing it, I think. To hear it logically when someone says it to you, not in that moment, if you force through pain, if you push past or trying to force or push something that your body doesn't want and it's telling you, I don't like this, please stop doing this, your body's not going to accept it. Your body is wiser than your ego, which is the part of you that's forcing it. And I don't mean this in that you're arrogant. You're no different to anybody else. We all have this ego. The ego is a separate entity that lives within us separately from the wisdom that we have within our body. What Inner Sanctum is starting to do and what the Posture Revolution will continue to do is teach you to listen to this wisdom that your body is giving you and learn how to adapt what you are doing accordingly. We are here because we have to respect our body's wisdom. And if you don't respect your body's wisdom and if you can't be kind to yourself, you will always be in this perpetual loop of causing yourself pain, recovering from the injury, or recovering from the um, kind of episode that you might have created, and then just repeating yourself. You're just gonna be stuck in that loop forever and ever and ever. I'm guessing that you are here because you want to change something, and you want to create progress. And I am here to give you permission to be kind to yourself. And I'm just as bad as everybody else. I'm horrible to myself. The way that I speak to myself isn't right, but I'm getting a lot better. I have done a lot of inner work, including endless amounts of reading self-help books and podcasts and yoga and breath work and therapy. I'm really starting to build this big toolkit of ways of being kinder to myself. And I know how hard it is, but I have got a lot better. And what I found is that since I have become kinder to myself, I've also started becoming kinder to other people as well. So that kindness really reflects in the world around us. I'm going to come on to talking a bit more about how I want you to mother yourself in a minute, but I'm just going to give us some time to allow the head spin to happen. It might be worth actually just having a little think about how your body perhaps feels different today than when you first started doing this. Do your hips feel more open? Are you feeling a bit more relaxed and comfortable? Has the breathing made any difference in terms of how stiff you felt? Maybe it does. 
Just keep breathing for a second. We're nearly at the head twisting stage. Remember to keep those feet nice and relaxed. And that's time. Twist your head over to the other way. So, mothering yourself. What does this mean? I want you to think about yourself as a child that you care deeply for. Maybe you have children, or maybe you have a niece or nephew or a friend's child, or just a child that has been prevalent in your life at some stage. And I want you to think about how much you love that child and the extent that you would go to to protect that child and how much it would upset you if that child was choosing to deliberately hurt itself. Imagine if that child was going up to a brick wall and just repeatedly cracking its head into a brick wall. Maybe you know where I'm going with this, but actually, a lot of the time, that's how people are treating their physical bodies. They are going to the metaphorical brick wall, an exercise that doesn't suit them, and they are cracking their head against the brick wall over and over again, asking themselves why it's not working. Imagine if that was a child doing that, and then see if you can reflect in on yourself as to how you probably do that to yourself a lot of the time when it comes to movement and posture, maybe in other ways as well. And I want you to treat yourself as you would do that child. So if you saw a child endlessly smacking their head against a brick wall, I'd like to think that you wouldn't watch them do it and just allow it to happen or encourage them or say, you know what, I think you need to keep doing that again. I think you need to do that a little bit harder. You need to do it five more times because maybe if you do it five more times, it won't hurt the sixth time. Hopefully this analogy is making it real for you as to how silly we can be. And I'm again, I'm not being mean to you. I'm not being um, trying to be horrible to you or make you feel bad. But the way that we treat ourselves is silly because we're not going to progress in that way if you are routinely going back to exercises and trying to force them to happen when your body is telling you i don't want to do that thing it's only going to make you feel worse and really that is the main point of the video today with this mothering yourself idea i want you at all times to ask yourself how would I look at myself if I was looking at a child that I cared for? And are you treating yourself in the same way that you would be treating that child that you would probably protect with your life? Protect yourself. Look after yourself. The kinder you are to yourself and the more that you look after yourself, the more you are going to feel better physically and mentally, the kinder you're going to be for other people, the better boundaries you're going to have with other people, and the more confident you're just going to be in your day-to-day -day life. This is such a important and big concept. And, you know, I'm not a professional therapist in those types of ways, um, in, 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 you know, like a talking therapy way. But what I do know is that the people who can adapt these types of concepts to their movement are going to make changes a lot quicker. So anytime throughout Inner Sanctum, throughout Posture Evolution, anytime that your body tells you, I don't wanna do this, please stop doing this. I want you to promise me and to promise yourself that you're going to be an advocate for yourself, you're going to mother yourself, and you're going to stop doing things that intuitively feel wrong. Because the more that you tap into your intuition, the more you're going to get out of this experience, the better your body's going to feel, and you're gonna open up these channels of communication between your brain, your ego, and your body. And that will be the thing, or one of the things, that makes the biggest difference, both in how you feel, but how you live your life. Hopefully that's given you a little bit of a reminder that if you're staying in this exercise and your lower back is hurting 
or maybe your neck is getting tense or your knee hurts, whatever it is, that you got out of this exercise when that started happening and you did something else that suited you more. You just focused on the breath and you listened to me lecture you a little bit, but hopefully prove a point that's a very important one to take on board. I'll see you again next week. Lots of love. Goodbye.